Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Ezekiel 24. This is going to be uh, approximately or about halfway through the Ezekiel commentary series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Verse 1, Ezekiel 24. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even of this same day. The king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. And utter a parable unto the rebellious house. And who is that rebellious house? Israel and Judah. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Set a pot, I'm sorry, set on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it. Gather the pieces thereon into it, even every good piece the thigh and the shoulder, fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock and burn also the bones under it and make it boil well and let them seethe the bones of it therein. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! To the pot whose scum is therein and whose scum is not gone out of it bring it out piece by piece let no lot fall upon it for her blood is in the midst of her she set it up upon the top of a rock she poured it not upon the ground to cover it with dust that I might cause my, that it might cause fury to come up to take vengeance. I have set her blood upon the top of a rock that it should not be covered. And I believe what it's saying here is you have no covering of the Lord for your sin. You know, you're naked, you need a covering. Well, they don't have it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I will even make the pile for fire great. Heap on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh, and spice it well, and let the bones be burned. Verse 11. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof, that the brass of it may be hot and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. She hath wearied herself with lies, and her great scum went not forth out of her. Her scum shall be in the fire. In thy filthiness is lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou wast not purged. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness any more, till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not go back, neither will I spare, neither will I repent, neither will I repent according to thy ways and according to thy doings shall they judge thee, saith the Lord God. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee 
the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shalt thy tears run down. Hmm, where have I read something like that before? Well, how about Revelation 21, verse 1? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now, if the new earth is the same size as the present earth, I believe, uh, if memory serves me correctly, 93% of the earth is covered with water. Let me check that. I don't want to be made a liar. Uh, I was wrong. 71% of the earth, uh, according to science, is covered with water. So if um, the new earth is the same size as the present earth and there's no sea, that means there's going to be approximately two-thirds more land area than there is now. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, not the unholy, polluted city, Old Jerusalem. No, no, the New. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a, uh, prepared as a bride, adorned, for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Ah, that's where I read that in Ezekiel 24. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. All right, back to Ezekiel 24, verse 16. Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. What does he mean, bind the tire of thine head upon thee? Well, in Webster's 1828, has several meanings. Uh, modern day meaning would be a, a rubber wheel on a car, right? On an automobile. But in old 1828 Webster's dictionary, it's a headdress, something that encompasses the head, a type of hat, attire, uh, something to adorn. Or to dress the head. So, and yes, it could also mean a uh, a wheel of a wagon. But uh, we're not talking about that. So, bind the tire of thine head upon thee. And put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. Verse 18. So I spake unto the people in the morning, 
and at even my wife died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. Wow, that's a rough day. His, in the evening his wife died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. And the people said unto me, Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us, that thou doest so? Then I answered them, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pitieth, and your sons and your daughters whom ye have left shall fall by the sword. And ye shall do as I have done, ye shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. And your tires shall be upon your heads, and your shoes upon your feet. Ye shall not mourn nor weep, but ye shall pine away for your iniquities, and mourn one toward another. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign, according to all that he hath done, shall ye do. And when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Also thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons, and their daughters. That he that escapeth in the day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thine ears. In that day shall thy mouth be open to him that is escaped, and thou shalt speak, and be no more dumb, and thou shalt be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord." Well, this is about halfway through the Ezekiel series. This is the end of chapter 24. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.